Hi everyone, it's James here from TSR Jivey Talks Tech. Now in recent years, there's been a massive uptake in large, medium, and even some smaller audio interfaces employing what's called AOIP, or audio over an internet protocol. And unless you live in the broadcast world, you probably know this better as Dante. But what is Dante? How do I use it? Even in my modest home studio setting, and how does it make my life easier? So, let's dig in, shall we? A little bit of backstory, if I may. So, just over 11 years ago, back in the Pro Tools Expert days, the good people at Focusrite sent me a selection of seven of their lovely, then new, red net rack units for me to have a play with. Well, the video evidence is still there for you to search for and enjoy. But cutting to the chase, I liked the idea of Dante, but didn't feel it was aimed at the small, or at the time, very small recording studios like mine. Fast forward to 2025 today, and it just shows you how wrong you, well, I can be. AOIP, and Dante in particular, is the backbone of my studio infrastructure. So, let's show you around the studio to some of the bits of kit that I'm using that are Dante equipped, how I'm using them, and how it makes my audio life just that little bit easier. My main recording interface is this rather lovely Antelope Audio Galaxy 32, which not only gives me 32 channels of analog I.O. to feed the console, but it also gives me up to 64 channels of Dante connectivity over a pair, one primary and one for redundancy, a pair of RJ45 sockets, or as we know them, Ethernet connectors. So that's 64 channels of audio, or technically 128 when you consider that 64 in and 64 out, over a single network cable. When you take into account the price, the ridiculously high price of high quality audio cables these days, being able to wire up your studio with Cat5e or even higher quality and speed Cat6 cable is a no-brainer. But we'll come back to that later. The network stuff is all plugged into a 16-port PoE or Power Over Ethernet switch. PoE-ready devices can receive their mains power from the network cable and not require a dedicated power supply. Again, more on this later. So what kit am I using that's Dante-ready? Well, first up, I have this rather stunning Neve 1073 OPX Mic Pre. Now, it can act as a standalone audio interface, but for me, I'm using it for its eight stunning sounding 1073 Mic Pre's and its built-in headphone amp. Imagine, if you will, the desk inputs are recording on channels 1 to 24 in Pro Tools, and the 1073 OPX is channels 25 to 32, giving me up to 32 recording channels ready to go 24 seven. We like that. The next input device I have attached is this rather lovely RME 12 mic D. And yes, the D does stand for Dante. Now, one of the many fantastic things about Dante is that it's not affected by location or length of cable run up to a point. So as long as I can connect a unit to my LAN or my local area network, then it'll be able to be seen by the Dante controller software and in turn my DAW, in this case Pro Tools. As you would imagine, I've put network ports all around my studio, including in the kitchen, the toilet, the cupboards, just in case I ever need to use those as extra recording spaces. And of course, the studio is connected to my house network via a cable, actually two, you know, just in case. So if I need the extra space for performers up in the house, away from the main studio, I can do. As I said before, network cable is far, far cheaper than high quality analog audio cables. The 12 mic D currently acts as my mobile mic pre. So instead of running cables across the room, I simply run the up to 12 microphone cables to the 12 mic D and then run a single network cable back to the switch. So the desk, the 1073 OPX and the RME 12 mic D give me 44 channels of input which is great, but I don't think I've ever maxed it out. So that's the inputs. What about the outputs? Well, I run my entire artist monitoring system over Dante using two different Focusrite RedNet boxes, the AM2 and the X2P. The AM2 is a two channel, stereo if you will, headphone and line level output box. One of these lives permanently next to the drums and the other comes out for sessions for the bass player. These are routed from sends in Pro Tools, allowing me to either listen to the main Pro Tools mix, or I can configure a dedicated monitor mix from the auxiliary sends in Pro Tools, allowing me to provide up to six players with their own individual custom monitor mix. 
I give the X2P units to the singer and the keyboard player, and you'll see why in a moment. The X2P adds a pair of super high quality mic and line level pre's, as well as a more me function. Can't imagine why I'd give that to the singer. The headphone amps on these sound great, but if I wanted, I could use both the AM2 and the X2Ps as monitor speaker controllers, as they both have balanced line level outputs. The AM2 and the X2P also have a network link port, so I can daisy chain the monitoring rig together to save on long cable runs to and from the switch. However, the AM2s, while PoE capable, that's power over ethernet, they don't allow you to daisy chain the power. So the first unit of the run is PoE, but the rest have to be plugged in. There are two other systems in the studio that run using Dante. The first is my second or backup recording rig. The most truly amazing thing about Dante, and in fact, all the AOIP solutions, is that you can route the signals from any number of sources or transmitters, as it's known in the Dante world, to any number of destinations or receivers, as it's known to Dante users. This means, once a signal is on the Dante network, there is no limit to the number of devices that can have access to it. So for all client sessions, I run a redundant Pro Tools system, using a thing called Dante Virtual Sound Card, or DVS. DVS is a software audio interface that sends and receives Dante signals, meaning that I can route everything that's on my Dante network to a second, third, or even fourth DAW or Dante equipped monitor desk. No dodgy Y split cables or hardware mic splitters here. The free Dante controller software, which is really at the heart of the Dante system, allows me to route any transmitters to any receivers pretty much any number of times with absolutely no reduction in signal quality, which is fantastic. So my second laptop is my always recording backup system. If there is ever an issue with the main recording computer and we capture a moment of genius, I always have access to go to the backup. It might take me a little while to dig in and find the recording we're really after, but it's there and it's going to be there, which is great. This works for live recording as well as my live recording solution is built around a Mackie DL32R, also with a Dante card installed. Now the DL32R, as you might have already guessed, has 32 mic pre's, but it also has 16 mono or eight stereo outputs, which can be configured for monitor speakers or for IEMs. Using Dante, I can configure the DL32R as a monitoring system, either live or in the studio. The main benefit of this system is that the DL32R is controllable from an iPad or tablet. So yes, you guessed it, performers can configure their own headphone or monitor mix, which is one less thing for me to worry about. Bonus! So you've seen some of my Dante equipped kit, but how do we make all these devices talk to each other and how do we route signals around the network? Well, we do this with, in my case, three pieces of software. Well, Five if you include the control panel software for the 1073 OPX and the RME12D, which both can be controlled across the network. So when I'm sitting at the drums, I can actually control the mic pre's for either the Neve or the RME, which is fantastic. But it's mostly three pieces of software, and we're gonna start with the Ordinate Dante controller. Dante controller is the software heart of your Dante network. And at its most basic, it's a cross point matrix allowing you to send audio signals from one piece of kit, the transmitters, to the inputs or receivers of another piece of kit. You can see here that not all of the kit has the same number of ins and outs, like the Neve 1073 OPX, which has eight transmitting channels, but only two receive channels. These I use as an extra headphone feed. The AM2 Rednet units have no transmitting channels at all. They simply receive two channels of Dante, or as we know it, stereo. The more I.O. the unit has, the more complex the Dante configuration can be. The Galaxy 32, for example, has up to 64 channels of Dante I.O. So if I'm not careful, it can get very messy very quickly. Now there's a lot more you can dive into inside the Dante controller software, but here's a couple of really important things to keep an eye on. The first and most important is sample rate. As a rule of thumb, all devices on the network should be set to the same sample rate. This includes all DAW sessions. Does not matter what the sample rate is, anything from 44.1K up to 192 kilohertz, depending on the device in question, as some devices, like the AM2s, only support up to 96K. 
But until you really know what you're doing, keep everything set to the same sample rate to avoid a real world of pain. The other rule of thumb, or at least in the early stage of your Dante voyage, is keep it simple. You don't need to be a network guru to run this stuff, but start small and add devices one at a time to your Dante network. This makes keeping track of your routing much, much easier. Now, talking about routing and networking for a moment, it's worth saying you do not need to have a dedicated network just for Dante. It can sit perfectly well on your studio network. However, if you're in a larger setting like a university or even a large multimedia facility, it might be worth setting up a managed network where Dante traffic is prioritized over, say, email. But that kind of configuration is well above my pay grade. In my setup, as I said before, I'm using the Antelope Audio Galaxy 32 as my main audio interface. The Galaxy 32 has one of the best routing and control panel configuration panel software things available today from, quite frankly, any hardware manufacturer, but it can take a little bit of getting your head around. In much the same way as you do with Dante Controller, you have to route signals into and out of the required channels and I.O. types with the Galaxy 32 routing control. Again, signals can be routed in any input and output in triplicate if you want. Its I.O. is incredibly flexible, but again, it can get away from you. So whatever you do, remember to save your configuration in both Dante Controller and the Galaxy Control Panel. Make sure you have at least two copies of this because you will lose one. No, you really don't need to be some kind of network ninja. If you have a very straightforward network with a switch hooked up to your ISP, your internet service provider's router thing, I use Sky, then you can start to build your Dante rig. It's that simple. Just stick to the aforementioned basics and you really won't go far wrong. So there you go, Dante and how I use it. If you have any questions about my setup or any of the gear I'm using, please do hit me up in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do click like, hit subscribe and ring that bell to be kept in the JTT loop. But for now, my name's James from TSR, Jivey Talks Tech, and I'll see you again very soon.